Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Richard Moglin and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, which is a follow-up to my chart layout video where I explained how to set up the main screen that I use and um, how I use all the different indicators, we're gonna be talking about this spreadsheet right here, which you can make in TC2000 and they call it a watch list. And basically you can set up all these different columns that help identify uh, certain characteristics of the stock, whether they're breaking out to new all-time highs, um, breaking down, downside reversals, and I'll have a link to this if you do use TC2000 down below in the description. Um, and at the end of the video, I'll also be showing how to set up this bar right here, which is very, very helpful in keeping track of these main characteristics, closing ranges, up-down volume, um, and also dollar volume. Uh, so let's get started, and I'll go through each of these columns and explain how I use it. Uh, so first things first, obviously the symbol, you wanna know uh, what the stock is. Uh, then we've got the next earnings date, and I think this is very, very important to always keep on the front of your screen uh, so you know when that important event is going to occur. Then we've got this weekly change column, which is basically the uh, percentage gain from the open of the week until the close. And let's go ahead and right click and edit. It's basically the close divided by the open minus one times 100. And before I get into uh, too many details, let's go ahead and show you how to create a column. So if you wanna alter this, uh, feel free to do so. So you wanna go over to this button right here, click add column. You can choose a value or condition. A value will bring up um, something like this where the output is a number. And then a condition uh, is an output of either um, yes or no, binary one or zero. And you can change how that output looks. Over here, I've got uh, green checks. And then here I've got red circles. Uh, so let's do kind of an example. So let's do a value column. Let's write a new formula. And uh, let's just do the close three days ago just to show you how that works. So uh, there you go. This is the close of uh, three bars ago for all of these different stocks. And to create a condition column, you do pretty much the same thing. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, add a condition, write a formula, and let's say uh, is the close greater than $15? So there you go, all of these are greater than $15 and you can right click, edit this, properties, and this is how you change it from a check to a circle. And you also wanna make sure that the refresh rate is as fast as possible so it updates automatically. Uh, so that's a quick example about how to set up different columns. Let's go ahead and delete that. And like I said, I'll have a link to this watch list down below in the description. So feel free to alter it and change it so it suits your needs. And going back to the columns, we've got the price column, which basically tells me what the current price uh, of the stock is. Then we've got the percent change, which is the percent change for the previous day's close. And any of these you can sort um, high to low, low to high, and you can also sort by two columns at the same time. Uh, so next up, we've got the volume buzz column, and this is very, very important and an excellent part of TC2000. And what this tells you is basically how is volume compared to normal? So is it above average volume or uh, below average volume? And this is especially useful on breakouts. I want to see ideally over 100% volume buzz. Uh, the higher, the better. I've seen 5,000, uh, 10,000. That's, that's ideal. Uh, but over 100% is kind of the um, baseline that I always look for. And next up, we've got the percentage from the open, which basically tells me how is the stock done since it opened on the day. And obviously, I want to see my stocks increase from the open, ideally. And similarly, we've got the percentage from the low, which basically tells me from the low of the day, how has the stock done? And this is especially important on a day like yesterday, where we had a gap down open, what stocks bounced the most. So uh, we've got Corsair, Roku, GRWG, Upwork, all those stocks really show that they had a bid um, and advanced nicely and bounced from the low. And next up, we've got the 10 for stochastic, and this basically tells me what that value is. And how I use this is um, to basically determine whether a stock is a little bit too extended for an initial entry. And ideally, I wanna see this below 75 uh, before I buy a stock. Uh, next up, we've got the up-down volume ratio, and the PCF for this will be down below in the description. Uh, it basically sums up all the up volume and uh, sums up all the down volume over the past 50 days and finds that ratio. And overall, I want to see above one, ideally over 1.2. You can see Tesla has um, a lot of buying coming into it recently, but a stock like SC down here uh, has had a little bit 
worse of a ratio down here, only at 0.93. Next up, we've got the price new high column. And basically to add this, you wanna search up price new high. And I use 250 days to um, basically represent one year of trading. And overall during a strong uptrend, I wanna see as many leaders making price new highs and also relative strength new all time highs um, during that uptrend. And to set up the relative strength, once again, you just have to search relative strength for SPY and set it at 250 days. Uh, next up, we've got the green dot, which I'll show uh, that formula right here. Uh, but overall, this is a kind of short-term stochastic cross indicator uh, developed by Dr. Eric Wish that shows that there's some upward momentum after some consolidation. And the teal dot, very similarly, is something that I've come up with, which is basically the same thing on a shorter time frame. And also, there's a minimum closing range value uh, needed as well. Um, so that is the green and teal dot. And next up, we've got the three bar break up, which I'll show uh, that formula right here. And a three bar break is basically when a stock is pulled back and consolidated a little bit for at least three days, and then takes all those highs out all in one bar. And it's often a very good entry point. And um, I entered, if you go to Peloton, my entry was based off a three bar break. You can see three days of consolidation. And then just in this one bar, it takes out all three of these highs. Next up, we've got the upside reversal column. And if I go ahead and show uh, this PCF right here, um, it basically it rallied strongly from the lows and had a good closing range. And next up, we've got the downside reversal column, which is basically the opposite of an upside reversal. You have to take out the previous day's high and then finish with a poor closing range. And in general, this kind of marks the start of the negative columns, which show up as red circles. And during a strong uptrend, I want to see as many uh, green checks over here as possible and as few red circles as possible as well. That just kind of is a sign that the market leaders are acting well. They're advancing a new price and relative strength in all-time highs and showing very little distribution. Uh, next up, we've also got the three-bar breakdown, which is very similar to the three-bar break up. But instead of taking out the highs, you take out the lows. And AMD actually had one yesterday, but it was, in my opinion, not too bad because it advanced nicely off the lows. We can see we had a consolidation here, and then in one bar, it took out all of these lows right here. Uh, next up, we've got below 21 EMA, which basically shows all the stocks that at this moment close below their 21 EMA. You can see that over here versus the purple line. And very similarly, you've got the below 50 SMA, which is below uh, the 50 simple moving average line right here, which is in blue. And let's show the PCF right here, basically C is less than the um, exponential moving average with the 21 day period. And the three bar breakdown, let's go ahead and show that. Uh, you can see C is less than the low from the previous day, the day before that, and the day before that, um, and so on. So that is it for these negative columns. And I've also got the weekly closing range here and also the daily closing range, which basically show me uh, where the stock is uh, within those respective ranges. And overall, I use these throughout the day to sort for potential stocks that are showing upward momentum, uh, breaking out into new all-time highs, both in terms of price and relative strength. Um, if there's a day like yesterday, I want to be taking note of any upside reversal bars. Um, you can see Roku had a great upside reversal, taking out the high as well of the previous day. And if we're seeing some distribution, I want to keep track of downside reversals, three more breaks down, and any stocks that are crossing below those key moving averages. Uh, so that's a brief summary about how I use this watch list right here. I think it's very useful and helpful in order to keep track of the market leadership and how they're performing. And I like the quick kind of visual summary from the green checks over here versus the red circles. I think that's very helpful. Just in kind of one snapshot, you can get a sense of how the market is doing. So now moving on to this bar right here, I want to show how to set this up. And basically, I've got the next earnings date the percent change um, on that day, the weekly closing range, the daily closing range, the up-down volume ratio, the percentage above the 21 EMA, and also the dollar volume. And I'll have links to all the PCFs down below in the description, so feel free to add them to your taskbar. But basically, to um, add something up here, you want to right-click, add field, uh, select the PCF or built-in um, fundamental or technical criteria that you want to add. Let's go ahead and put up the EPS latest quarter and you can go ahead and change uh, the uh, prefix. So you can say EPS 
Um, we can make it a lot bigger. So I like 18 and you can also make it bold or in italics, change the decimal places, really change anything about how it looks up there on the screen. And as for how I use this, I want to basically always keep track of the next earnings date. I want to see obviously my stocks increasing in value. I want to have both high um, weekly and daily closing ranges up down volume ratio over 1.2. And for the percentage above the 21 EMA, this basically depends on whether a stock is a little bit more extended from that moving average or is pulling back. And overall, I want to see this less than 15% if a stock is in an uptrend. But obviously, at the start of a breakout, this is going to be a high value. If we've got a crowd strike coming up here, you can see that right here, it was quite extended from the 21 EMA, about 25%. So um, that kind of tells me to uh, be ready for a potential pullback, which we had back to that key moving average, which is another potential uh, buy opportunity. Uh, so that is the percentage above the 21 EMA. And lastly, we've got the dollar volume, which is basically the average price over the past few days uh, multiplied by the average volume. So how much uh, dollar volume it's trading every single day. And in general, I want to see this over 50 million. That just shows that there's kind of a minimum liquidity level for potential institutions to uh, feel comfortable taking up positions. And like I said, the PCF for all of these will be in the description down below. Uh, so that is a quick run through of both my uh, watch list over here and all the different columns and how I use it, as well as how to set up uh, this toolbar right here. Um, and like I said, I think TC2000 is great with all these customizability options that really allow you to um, improve your process um, by creating these different features uh, like the the watch list as well as the bar up there. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about TC2000 down below in the comment section. Uh, but other than that, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in future videos.